5.30 in the morning. We're heading to Montecito Cars and Coffee. Ken is over there. I'm in the Fiat. We're going to Magnuson's shop to collect a bunch of other cars. And then we're going to Montecito. We're at the Magnuson shop, and Ken's putting some oil on his car. All the cars are gathering. This is gonna be freaking awesome. Yeah. You all set? Get there. And then the sensor was over the surface. I know, so how do you know that? This is Joe Javaris, uh, daughter of uh, the famous George. What the hell are you doing here so early, damn it? Oh my god, a full moon and fog. I'm devoted. We're going to Montecito. What are you guys driving? We are driving a 72 white convertible van. It's gorgeous. And you got the jacket in the patch. patch. Yes, I'm trying uh, to manage. Are you driving or is the hubby driving? Hit the hubby. Yeah, yeah you, know. you get to sleep on the way up. <laughs> I get to put my feet in my purse because they're cold. <laughs> There's donuts and coffee. Is there still donuts and coffee back there? Sure. Everywhere. Uh, cool car. Michael! Good evening! <laughs> we were going to be taking this to the show, but it's actually going to Benedict Castle, so it has to stay nice and clean. Instead, we're going to take other cars. Aren't we, Michael? We are. Michael has a uh, beautiful Jaguar that he's bringing. But right now, he's enamored with the other cars. James! Good morning, buddy. How you feeling? Yeah? You look sleepy. early. All the cars are lined up. Everyone's pretty stoked. We get a prime spot. Should be a really good day. It's going to be really sunny. Look at that! Uh, this is Tom, and otherwise known as Tom. Yeah, or well, Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> you have a quite an amazing Ford truck behind us Thank that you. you brought in, Thank and you. Um, you had this thing done uh, with your vision in mind. Well, I was working out on my route. I'm a mailman full time, and then I saw this truck. Then I just had a vision. I just wanted something different. A note on the customer's car saying, "If you ever want to sell this thing, let me know." And sure enough, he gave me a call. And how, how long before you, you left him a message before he actually said uh, yes? Probably about two weeks or so. Okay. So he had to think about it. Yeah. 
kind of brought up by accident. I was new, young at the time, getting to hot rods and stuff, and actually my, my friend got me into it, and actually he told me, you bought the wrong years. You're supposed to be a 56, not 57. So, but it worked out. Kinda, he, it he worked hasn't out. seen this now, because this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it worked out. Yeah. There's a very few 57 out there, so I'm glad I did something different. Yeah. Time to go get some coffee. I think this is like my fourth coffee already. I've never had a cup of coffee. Oh, interesting. I wonder how he would be with a cup of coffee. That's kind of scary because try it? he already drives way too fast. No. Way too fast. And these gentlemen, uh, you know, English, 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 English cars. People. Yeah. <laughs> Wings on that mother. Some bar stools. Turnout, Camaros, Mustangs, even a Citron 2CD, right there. Here and she brought her Jaguar. Oh yes, the one that I've always wanted. <laughs> Montecito Cars and Coffee, all done. And we're going to a little lunch shop in Carpinteria. Gonna check that out. And then we're gonna head over to the Murphy Museum for some awesome Studebakers and Packards. Let's go! Once again, back at the Murphy. Oh. Look what I spotted. I drove that yesterday, but right now I need to find the restroom. This is Mike. What is the deal? Everyone is taller than me at the Murphy Museum. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, when I come here, no, I'm a shrimp compared to you. <laughs> Everyone's a shrimp. But you have a spectacular car that I heard uh, a few, uh, you know, tidbits about. It took you 14 years to find all the parts to put this thing back together. Well, close to it. Okay. Just about. All right. Tell me what this is. This is a 1932 Studebaker Indianapolis. In 1931. The chief engineer of Studebaker decided to go race Indianapolis and change the rules to allow stock block engines. So they took a Studebaker president engine and a bunch of other parts from Studebaker and had a fellow named Herman Wrigley put together a car and went and ran Indianapolis. Wow. And at 450 miles, they were leading the race and hit an oil spot and went over the wall. 
<laughs> so that was kind of a disaster, but Studebaker decided that they really needed to have some publicity. Right, right. So they hired Riglin to build four more cars. And in 32 and in 33, they took a five-car team to Studebaker. Indianapolis and did incredibly well. Sure. And this is one of the four? And this is one of the four. This is Howard, and this is the guy, this is the reason this all this stuff is happening, probably, probably, right? Well, it's my responsibility to organize this show once a year. So it's either your fault or your blessing? Usually my fault, but yeah, I'll take the blessing if I can get it. What is it about Studebakers? You know, you, you generally get the same question every time, and that is, who built Studebakers? You can buy a bumper sticker that will tell you that. And the answer is? Studebaker. Of course, Studebaker. And and what is the attraction with these cars? They're kind of funky, kind because of weird. Because that's why. You know? You don't see anybody driving a Studebaker that dresses normally, uh, does most things normally. So you're saying that the- We like to be different. The, the, the cars are funky and a little weird and so are the people. Yeah, absolutely. What, what's the website for the uh, for the club? www Studebakers, LA, Studebakers, plural, LA, one word, dot com. Awesome. Well, thank you for doing this because the sure. cars are freaking awesome. And, and Wonder a little weird. Get some more pictures. <laughs> One of the guys was just showing yeah, us so one of his of Studebakers, this red one back here. And he came up with the term Studebakery, which I think is a fantastic term for a new bakery full of strange and wonderful items. A little weird looking, but still cool.